Ayan, magandang umaga sa lahat ng ating mga taga-subaybay. Okay, ngayong umaga ay matutunghaya natin ang una sa tatlong webinar na nagayang maghatid ng research results mula mula sa the uh, bar funded project surveillance and detection of microbe utilizing molecular techniques and associated trips vector on onion, garlic, and mango in the sun. Ako po ay si Maureen Ceres de Rojas, isang university researcher sa NCPC. At samahan niyo kami ngayong umagang tunghayan ang research results dissemination and learning event para sa Mingo. Ang proyektong ito ay pinanduhan ng DA Bureau of Agricultural Research at pinangunahan na Cagayan State University kasama ang National Crop Protection Center, CAPS UPLB, Benguet State University at De La Salle University. Ating simula ng webinar na ito sa isang panalangin na susundan na pabansang awit ng Pilipinas. Father, may everything we do begin with your inspiration and continue with your saving help. Let our work always find its origin in you and through you reach completion. Lord, pour out on us the spirit of understanding, truth, and peace. Help us to strive with all our hearts to know what is pleasing to you. And when we know your will, make us determined to do it. God, our Father, work is your gift to us, a call to reach new heights by using our talents for the good of all. Guide us as we work and teach us to live in the spirit that has made us your sons and daughters, in the love that has made us brothers and sisters. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
alam kong excited na ang lahat dahil tiyak na marami tayong matututunan ngayong umaga sa aming inihandang webinar. At uh, upang mapanatili ang kaisa ng ating webinar, nais ko pong magbahagi ng kaunting house rules. Una, para sa ating mga Zoom attendees, we would like you to please keep your microphones on mute. At uh, para naman sa lahat ng ating mga taga-subaybay sa FB at YouTube Live, Maaari po tayong magtanong uko sa mga paksang nabanggit during the open forum na bubuksan sa huling bahagi ng ating palatuntunan. Maaari pong maglagay ay ah, ilagay ang inyong mga tanong sa Zoom chat box, FB at YouTube live comment boxes. Para sa ating mga kasamahan naman sa Zoom, you can also ask live sa open forum. Just use the raise hand button and uh, our Q&A moderator will give you the floor. At panghuli, iniimbitahan ng lahat na sumagot sa evaluation form na ibabahagi mamaya sa bandang mulihan ng webinar na ito. Kaakibat noon ang pagpapadala ng certificate of attendance from this webinar. Ayan. Ngayon po, uh, upang handugan tayo ng pambungad na pananalita, inaaniyahan natin si Dr. Urduha G. Alvarado, ang president ng Cagayan State University. Dr. Alvarado? Our hardworking presenters always in search for new knowledge. DA Bar Director Junel Soriano, Project Leader Junel Guzman, and CPC UPLB Director Barbara Kawili. To our hardworking presenters always in search for new knowledge, our able and intelligent reactors, good morning. Agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Without our farmers, we won't be able to put healthy and fresh products on the table. We recognize the bounty of agricultural products here in Cagayan. We are, after all, are known as a largely agricultural province. Our greatest salute goes to our farmers who toil our lands. You are our everyday heroes. However, there can be so many obstacles that come with farming. Other than weather and soil quality among factors to consider in order to have an abundant harvest season, we also have insects to worry about. One of these are the trips, which commonly invade crops such as mangoes, onions, and garlic. Trips have been a long-standing enemy of our farmers. The infestation of this in our farmlands can cause low production, and deliver a low quality yield. That is why we are happy in CSU to partner with the National Crop Protection Center of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and in collaboration with Benguet State University and De La Salle University in this online research and results dissemination and learning event. We are lucky to have our research experts in the field. The best way to control trips is to get to know them, what they thrive in, how they live, and when they are most prominent. We really should get to know more about these friends who are more of fiends, so we can get rid of them. It also pays to know the potent diseases and the good agricultural practices that are backed by science. This brings so much essence to have you participate in this three-day research dissemination activity. We are happy to cascade this knowledge to those who are on the ground, those who are prone to experience them in their crops. I am giving you my warmest welcome wherever you are today. 
We hope you would learn a lot from the lectures and practice it in your farms. Welcome everyone and may everyone have an insightful day ahead. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Ayan, maraming salamat po, Dr. Alvarado, at mabuhay din po kayo. Para naman, bigyan tayo ng inspirational message. Naririto po ang DA Bureau of Agriculture Research Assistant Director, si Dr. Joel H. Lales. Dr. Lales? Cogayan State University, President Dr. Duha Alvarado, National Crop Protection Center, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Director Dr. Barbara Pawili, CSU Project Leaders Dr. Jonel Guzman, Dr. Cecilia Reyes, Eget State University, Delisada State University, NCPC UPLB, and CSU STEAM professors and staff, our colleagues from the department, and the Bureau of Agricultural Research Bar, and to all the panel reactors and guests attending here today, blessed morning to all. It is with great pleasure to be part of this learning event as we discuss the research results on surveillance and detection of microbe utilizing molecular techniques, associated trips vector of onion, garlic, and mango in Luzon. Over the years, we encountered challenges in relation to pests and diseases. And now, we have been experiencing attacks of drips resulting in resistance, resurgence, and high levels of chemical residue in fresh produce, compromising the livelihood of local farmers. It takes great minds to find solutions that require research, trial and error, experiments, most importantly, patience, commitment, and dedication from our experts. Today, let me commend the researchers and professors from various universities who render their time and effort to develop research for development technologies for the benefit of our farmers and fisher folk. We at the PA Bar believe that these are for the initiatives to lead to better pest control and management give out support our partner institutions because we know that these technologies would protect our beneficiaries' livelihood and opportunities. From the discussion that we will be having today, I hope that we will be able to share and communicate these results to our stakeholders in the language they know how. And we shall coordinate and integrate these results and turn it from materials that may be of use in their farming practices and strategies. As we adapt to the new normal, I hope we continue to find problems in the agriculture and fishery sector by consulting our beneficiaries. We shall work hand in hand to address their needs, as we would also want them to achieve a masaganang ani at mataas na kita. On behalf of the day bar director, Dr. Junel P. Soriano. We would like to thank all of you once again for your continuous service, commitment, and support for being present here today. Mabuhay po tayo na. Yeah, and thank you po, Dr. Lales. We sure will be continuing this fight for the farmers with you. At uh, upang higit tayong ma-inspire ngayong umaga, isa pang inspirational message ang ibibigay sa atin this time ng DA Bureau of Agricultural Research Director, si Dr. Janelle B. Soriano. Dr. Soriano? Isang masaganang araw po. Sa inyong lahat, lalong-lalong na po sa ating mga magsasakat, mangingisdang, walang humpay sa pagtatrabaho upang masigurong bawat pamilyang Pilipino ay mayroong nakainig sa araw-araw. First of all, let me applaud 
the Cagayan State University, led by the President Orduja Alvarado, for hosting this. Likewise, we also applaud their partners, namely National Crop Protection Center of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Benguet State University, and De La Salle University. This event, the online research results dissemination and learning event, is connected to the DA Bar funded project surveillance and detection of microbe utilizing molecular techniques and associated trips vector on onion, garlic, and mango in the soil. In this three day event, the participants will be able to pick up new knowledge and techniques from the project apply on their own and eventually improve their farm productivity and their quality of life. This is just one of the many DA Bar funded projects as the government mandated arm in research for development. Rest assured that we, through our partner implementing agencies, are always on the lookout for newer agricultural technologies and techniques with the aim of fostering them for the benefit of our agri-fishery stakeholders. In other words, you push and inspire us to work even harder to the very extent of our capabilities so we can continue to help and support our farmers and fisher folks. In closing, I want to send my heartfelt gratitude I want to send my heartfelt gratitude to our partners in the academic sector for their unwavering commitment and support to our farmers and fisher folks. Maraming salamat at mabuhay ang ating mga magsasakat, manginisdang Pilipino. Ayan, our heartfelt gratitude din po sa inyo, Dr. Soriano, for the continuous support to agricultural researches such as this. So hindi po magiging posible ang mga proyektong katulad nito kung hindi rin po dahil sa suporta ng mga ahensyang katulad ng DA Bar. Yeah, maraming salamat po. So marahil kayo po ay curious about sa project na ito. Kaya ngayon, inaaniyahan natin si Dr. Jonel B. Guzman ang project leader ng surveillance and detection of microbe utilizing molecular techniques and associated trips vector on onion, garlic, and mango in Luzon upang bigyan tayo ng overview of the project. Dr. Guzman? A bountiful morning to everyone. In line with our activity, online research results, dissemination, and online learning event, we would also like to launch our website, The Thrips of the Philippines. The website is dedicated to educate our farmers, researchers in the government and academe, and faculty and students in the field of agriculture and related sciences on thrips, its morphology, detection, and control or management. First of all, what are thrips and why do we need to study them? Trips, or colisipsip, are very minute insects with body size ranging from 0.5 to 15 millimeter with color varying from pale yellow, light brown to dark brown, black or bright colored. These insects are invasive in nature and feed on plants, some on fungi, mosses, 
and a few are known as predators of other insects and mites. They cause damage directly through feeding and oviposition on leaves, buds, flowers, and fruits, or indirectly through transmission of viral, bacterial, or fungal pathogens. They reproduce sexually or asexually, hence producing several generations on their host crops annually. Our website contains a pool of information on these insect pests that were collected through the study. This information were processed and presented in the form of lectures, manuals, multimedia references, and scientific articles. We currently have 14 learning materials, 10 published scientific articles, two utility model publications, and multimedia references on the different studies conducted for the project deposited in the website. The website was made possible by the shared expertise of our team of consultants from our collaborating agencies, the National Crop Protection Center of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, De La Salle University, and Benguet State University, which was led by Dr. Cecilia P. Reyes, an internationally renowned TRIPS specialist and taxonomist. A special thanks to the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research for funding support to undertake the research, thus making this website possible. You can visit our website anytime through the URL fieldtrips.wordpress.com. And marami salamat po, Jok. Uh, Doc Junel sa ibinahagi yung uh, project website overview. So, wag natin kakalimutan, fieldtrips.wordpress.com. Ngayon, uh, para naman po maging uh, memorable ang webinar na ito, nais ko pong imbitahan ng lahat ng mga kasama natin sa Zoom Space na buksan ang kanilang mga camera para sa munting photo op. Uh, tinatawagan ko po si Miss Charlotte para pangunahan nito. Miss Charlotte? Yan, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Nangyari lamang po na makibukas ang ating mga uh, camera. Yan, so I think handa na po ang ating first panel. Okay, so ngiti po tayo. One, two, three, smile. Next panel po. Okay, one, two, three, smile. And last one po. One, two, three, smile. Okay na po, thank you. Ayan, maraming salamat, Ms. Charlotte. So, bago po tayo magsimula, nais po nating uh, magbigay ng kaunting aliw sa inyong umaga. So, nais namin nga uh, ibahagi sa inyo ang munting awitin kasama ang ilan sa mga project members sa, pam sa panguna ng team mula sa Cagayan State University. Ating awitin ang The Banana Flower Trips Song. Why 
Why are my banana fingers full of that and pimples? I traded it in safety lines and over all the pots and branches. Banana fingers to work. Oh, oh. Salamat po. Sana ay na-enjoy ninyo katulad namin ang awiting ito. Hindi lamang entertaining, educational pa. So if you want to listen to it again, makikita nyo ang song na ito na nakapost sa YouTube. Just look for the Banana Flower Trips song. Ayan. Sa yugtong ito ay mapapakinggan na natin ang presentasyon tungkol sa trips or kulisip-sip on Carabao Mingo. Ito ay ihahatid sa atin ni Dr. Cecilia P. Reyes, isang retired professor mula sa Cagayan State University. Siya ang nag-iisang TRIPS Specialist Taxonomist sa, uh, sa, Pilip, uh, sa Pilipinas na may international standing. Ang publications niya tungkol sa Philippine TRIPS ay nagbigay ng effective base para sa mga susunod na pag-aaral, hindi lamang sa insect biodiversity at biosecurity, maging sa agriculture and uh, crop protection. Siya ay tumanggap ng 1993 NSTW Outstanding Research and Development Award in Agriculture, Basic Research, mula sa DOST. 1994 Outstanding Young Scientist in Entomology Award mula sa National Academy of Science and Technology. Siya rin ay kinikilala bilang 2021 Cohort of Women Leaders in Agriculture, Science, and Education ng SoutheastAsiaWomen.org at 2022 10 Flowers of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math or STEM ng DOST SDII Philippine Journal of Science. At napiling 2022 Tatak University of the Philippines Los Baños Alumnos ng uh, UPLB Alumni Relations Office. Siya rin ay isang PICAARD at Fulbright Philippine Agriculture Scholar at dating Executive Director ng National Research Council of the Philippines. Muli si Dr. Cecilia P. Reyes. Um, my top on trips on Carabao Mango. Uh, Carabao Mango is the third most important fruit crop in the Philippines. And mango products are sold to Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, United Kingdom, USA, Switzerland, and Korea. Mango trees attract insects, including trips, or we call them kulisipsip, small, pale yellow, brown, black or bicolored insects that could carry and transmit disease causing bacteria, fungi, and virus. If not managed well, trips cause significant yield loss to mango production alone or in combination of microbial diseases. Trips aggregate and with the person sucking mouth parts cause injury by sucking the contents of the cells of mango leaves, flowers, and fruit, resulting to flower discoloration, weakening of fruit sets, bronzing, and cracking of the skin of mango fruit. Therefore, an accurate identification of trips is essential to make use of available scientific and technological information in developing pest management strategies. Our study aimed to determine the diversity and abundance of trips in Carabao Mango in Piat Cagayan. Specifically, the study aimed to identify species of trips 
invest in Carabao Mango in Cagayan State University Piat Nature Farm Orchard. Identify species of trips in pesting carabao mango in Hacienda Villablanca or chard. Determine the effect of temperature and relative humidity to the population of trips. And determine species diversity index of trips in the selected orchards. Now, this is our study site one, and this is our study site two. Now, trips were collected from 30 mango trees from each orchard grouped into six based on their location, north, east, west, south, and center. Weekly sampling was conducted from January 2020 to March 2020 using five covering twigs per mango tree by shaking or tapping method. Now temperature and relative humidity data were taken from Pagasa. Trips were brought to the laboratory, sorted under the microscope and preserved in 70% ethanol. Trips were identified using a reference book, Tysanopra hexapoda of the Philippine Islands, and online resources. Data collected were analyzed using a Minitab statistical software version 17, uh, utilizing analysis of variance and in our regression analysis. The results of our study, uh, the first species of drips that were found in the collection is strips hawaiensis, commonly known as banana flower trips. It was the dominant species of trips with 80% of total trips count in CSUP at Nature Farm or Chard and 99% in Hacienda Villabla or Chard. Trips Hawaiiensis is polypigos trips known as major pest of Cavendish banana, mango, pomelo, roses and other ornamentals in the Philippines and in many countries. Trips feed on petals, resulting in discoloration and bronzing of the fruit surface, resulting to fruits unsuitable for marketing. Trips were positively affected by temperature, while relative humidity had a weak effect on trips total counts. Now, in a related study, uh, trips reared on flowers of Cavendish banana yielded the following fungi, Fusarium dimerum, Fusarium proliferatum, Fusarium saccharae, Fusarium verticelloides, a species of Fusarium, Gibberella monilipones, and Clunostachys rosaceae. The second species that were found in the samples was Certotrips dorsalis. There were few individuals of Certotrips dorsalis, commonly known as chili trips. They were found on mango flowers, or about 11% of the total counts in CSU Piat Nature Farm Orchard and 1% in Hacienda Villa Bianca or chard. Now, Certotripsorsalis is also a polypigos strips known as pest of mango, pepper, peanut, and other crops in the Philippines and in many countries. The trips total counts were weakly affected by temperature and relative humidity. Now, abroad, chili trips is a confirmed vector of seven viral diseases, chili leaf curl virus, capsicum chlorosis virus, peanut necrosis virus, peanut yellow spot virus, tobacco street virus, melon yellow spot virus, and watermelon silver mottle virus. The third species found in the collection is Megalorotrips usitatus. 
commonly known as flower bean thrips. Megalorotrips usitatus were found on mango birds, or 8% of the total trips detected in Seashupiat Nature Farm Orchard, and 0.3% in Hacienda Villa Bianca Orchard. Megalorotrips usitatus is a pest of legumes and nut in the Philippine many countries. Now, the temperature and relative humidity had almost no effect on the total counts of megalorotrips usitatus. In 2010, megalorotrips usitatus was collected on mango flowers in Malaysia. The fourth species found in the collection is haplotrips gordii. A few individuals of haplotrips gordii were found on mango flowers, or 0.76% of total trips collected in CSU Piat Nature Farm Orchard, and 0.032% in Hacienda Villabianca Orchard. Haplotrips gordii is, again, a polypigos trips recorded on numerous plants in the Philippines and many countries. Temperature and humidity had almost no effect on trips total counts. In 2010, haplotrips gordii was collected on mango flowers in Malaysia. The species diversity indices of using Shannon's index for CSU Piat Nature Farm and Ashenda Bia Bianca mango orchards showed the trips were most diverse on flowers of mango trees located in the north where there were more grasses. Grasses in these orchards probably provided refuge between mango flowering seasons and during the application of insecticides. The mango orchard is a disturbed habitat, as indicated by the few number of thrips species and a high population of one species, thrips hawaiensis, which could be due to management practice of spraying of potassium nitrite as flower inducer, and epimetrine and beta cyclotrin plus imidacloropid insecticides to protect mango flowers and fruits from insect pest attack. Now, in conclusion, there were four species of trips infesting carabao mango in two orchards in Piat Cagayan, namely trips hawaiensis, certotrips dorsalis, megalorotrips usitatus, and haplotrips godii. This is the first record of megalorotrips usitatus and haplotrips godii on mango in the Philippines. Trips hawaiensis was the dominant species of trips, both CSU Piat Nature Farm and Hacienda Villabianca orchards. Trips hawaiensis and certotrips dorsalis, total counts were positively affected by temperature and weekly, or not affected by relative humidity. Our recommendations. Trips should be monitored regularly in orchards, especially during dry season. When temperature is high for an increase in temperature, tends to accelerate insect consumption, development, and movement which can affect population dynamics by influencing fecundity, survival, generation time, and population size. Second, use commercially available blue and yellow sticky traps to monitor and manage trips. Third, use biodegradable or natural insecticides to maintain biological balance between natural enemies and insect pests in the orchard. 
and last use dispersal emergence insect up baited with commercially available chemical attractants such as aggregation pheromone and plant pheromone. We would like to acknowledge our funding agency, the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research. Thank you. Ayan, marami salamat po sa very informative presentation about trips in Mingo, Ma'am Cecil. Ngayon naman po ay tunghaya natin ang ibabahagi ni Dr. Pinyon ukol sa diseases of Carabao Mingo. Si Dr. Pinyon ay isang retired associate professor mula sa Dinget State University. Siya ay nagtapos ng BS Agriculture sa CLSU, MS Agriculture sa BSU at PhD in Plant Pathology sa UTLB. Siya ay naging bahagi ng iba't ibang research projects bilang study leader at consultant. Aktibo rin po siyang nagbabahagi sa iba't ibang mga trainings bilang resource person hinggil sa disease management of fruits, vegetables, and cut flowers. Siya rin po ay naging technical consultant hinggil sa fungicides ng ilang mga malalaking crop protection companies. So katulad ni Dr. Reyes, siya rin ay isang Picard at Fulbright uh, Philippine Agriculture Scholar. Sa kasalukuyan, siya ay uh, panelist sa Fulbright Scholarship Program for PhD. So, tinatawagan po natin, Dr. Pinyon. Diseases of Carabao Mango. Hi everyone, I am Aurora Pinyon, project consultant of this DIY branded project. The mango, which is Mangipera Indica under the family Anacardiaceae, is the national fruit of the Philippines. It is one of the most popular fruit grown in tropical and subtropical zones of the world. Carabao mango is considered as premium agricultural export in the Philippines, being the third among important fruit crop based on export volume and value. However, production of Carabao mango dropped by 3.3% from 546,000 tons in third quarter of 2017 to 528,000 tons over the same period in 2018. Philippine Statistics Authority attributed this low production to several factors such as occurrence of rainfall, adverse effect of insect pests, particularly seed fly and fungal diseases. Objectives. To identify diseases of mango from study sites through symptomatology. To recommend management strategies against mango diseases. Anthracnose, causal agents, Culetotricum asianum, Culetotricum procticola, Culetotricum tropicale, and Culetotricum teo lomicola. The symptoms can be observed on mango leaves, mango inflorescence, and mango fruits. On the leaves, it is shown as irregularly shaped brown to black spots on affected mango leaves. Irregularly shaped lesions that are necrotic and often surrounded by chlorotic halo. At the right side of the plate, we could observe the pure culture of Culetotricum, the upper side, Below side is the conidia of Clitotricum. Symptoms on, of anthracnose on affected leaves, which is letter A, on inflorescence, letter B, and letter C, on affected fruits. On affected fruits, it appears as black, irregularly shaped sunken lesions and may form larger lesions through coalescence. Management of anthracnose. Physical methods such as bugging and hot water treatment of 50 53 degrees centigrade for 5 to 10 minutes resulted in 83% control of the disease. Hot water treatment at 53 degrees centigrade for 20 minutes showed fungistatic effect against anthracnose at around 
48.71 to 52.63%. In vitro study results using plant extracts and biological control agent. Plant extracts like ale, alum plant extracts at 0.75 grams per liter showing protective and curative mode of action on fruits. Lemon peel extract or LPE at 1.75 to 2.5 grams per liter. Totally controlled actropos pathogens mode of action is of protective and curative in nature. Moringa olipera extract or MOE at the rate of 2.25 to 3.00 grams per liter controlled the said disease. Application of biological control agent such as yeasts, Bacillus subtilis, Bacillus amyloliquefaciens were also proven effective. Application of fungicides such as copper base, which is mancoseb, benomil, iabendazole, Prochloras, which is the octave, imazalil, azoxystrobine, the amistar, hiram, and captan. Stem endra, or what we call as the SER. The causal agents of SER is Lascio diplodia teobromae, another is Neophysicocum sp, Fomosis. Mangifere. The symptoms on affected fruit is observed as watery decay that usually start at the stem end and rapidly expands through the fruit pulp, wrapping the entire upper part of the fruit. The said symptoms could be observed at the right portion of the plate. Dark circular lesions develop from the stem end as the fruit ripens. Hence, the name that is point is well descriptive of the disease stem and rot. The causal agent of stem and rot, A and B, pure culture of Lascio diplodia teibromae, conidia of the said pathogen. C and D, culture and conidia of Neophysicoco mangiferae, E and F, Pure culture and conidia of homopsis mangiferi. Management of SER or stem end rot. Preventing field infections through cultural practices such as field sanitation, fruit bagging, and others. Protective fungicide sprays commencing at flowering stage and continuing until two weeks prior to harvest is also recommended. Post harvest treatment with a safe fungicide, essential oils, or biological control agent. Harvesting with a stem, approximately 10 ml mm is effective. Hot water treatment at 50 degree degrees at 5 to 10 minutes resulted to 100% control. Thank you very much for listening. Ayan. Uh, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Aw. Ngayon naman po, para talakayin ang Good Agricultural Practices or GAP for Mingo, makakasama natin ang isa sa mga batikang kasamahan din po natin dito sa NCPC CAPS UPLB. Si Doc Bonnie ay isang retired university researcher at uh, siya po ay isang eksperto pagdating sa insecticide to toxicology, household pest control, biological control, uh, biosecurity, biodiversity, and pest management. Pinangunahin niya ang NCPC Quick Response Team na nakatanggap ng 2018 Nelia Gonzalez Award for Excellence Outstanding Extension Team at 2018 UPLB Award for Outstanding Extension Team. Pinangunahan din niya ang maraming research projects na pinondohan ng PICA-ART, NRCP, DA-BAR at marami pang iba. 
Kilala din siya bilang isang technical working group member sa iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno, katulad ng BPI at PAPS. At uh, marami din siyang naging international collaborations, katulad ng ASEAN Residue on Tropical Fruits, Improved Sanitary and Phytosanitary Handling sa Mekong Region, Cambodia, at naging representative ng ASEAN BCAs for Sustainable Food Production. Let us all welcome uh, Dr. Bonifacio F. Kayabiyab. Good morning. Uh, I am Bonifacio Kayabiyab and my topic for this morning is on good agricultural practices for mango. What is the importance of gap in mango or good agricultural practice in mango. First, for producers, products are considered healthy and reliable as they are produced through GAP. Competitiveness in local and foreign markets increases. For consumers, GAP ensures food safety and human health as the product becomes reliable and quality will increase. For traders, and retailers, there will be more contracts or repeat orders from manufacturers due to the fact that uh, the health issues will be eliminated, including the safety issues. There will be increased consumer confidence in the product and this can lead to increased demand. As to the environment, the concerns of ecological balance and protection of natural resources are eliminated and then sustainable and responsible production are ensured in the environment. Natural life and biodiversity are preserved. Now, the Code of Gap for Mango lists down the practices for pre- and post-production of safe and high-quality mangoes intended for both domestic and export markets. It provides common understanding on farm location, farm structure and maintenance, cultural and farm management, integrated pest management, and pesticide management. All of these are geared towards GAP compliance. Now, this presentation of mine will focus on IPM or integrated pest management, or what we call best practices for trips control and pesticide management. What is IPM? It is basically an effective and environment-friendly approach to manage pests. We want to control and minimize the damage of pests. It combines the use of current and comprehensive information on the life cycles of pests, their interaction with the environment, surveillance and monitoring, and the available pest control methods such as varietal selection or resistant varieties, biological, cultural, and chemical control. The use of chemicals should be only on a need basis. Now, let's look at the uh, pests that attacks mango at various stages of development. Flowers and fruits are the most susceptible to major pests of mango. The following are important factors for a successful implementation of IPM. We should know the crop phenology, pest identity, biology and damage, the pest and weather monitoring, and finally, pesticide management. Let's look at the uh, plant stage and uh, days after flower induction as a form of preview of the different stages. So bud break is around six to eight days after flower induction. Bud emergence is nine to 12 days, Dappy. Panical elongation, which is at C, is 13 to 20, Dappy. P or pre antithesis is 23 to 25 Duffy. Full bloom at the letter E is 26 to 30 days. And fruit set or mung bean or mungo seed size at letter F is around 31 to 35 days. Fruit enlargement at corn size, letter G is around 36 to 42 Duffy. Fruit enlargement marble size. 43 to 50 Duffy at letter H. Letter I, fruit enlargement, chicken egg size is around 51 to 60 Duffy. Fruit enlargement at letter J is 61 to 90 Duffy. 
K was start of maturation at 91 to 109 WM full maturity at 110 to 120 WM. Now let's look at the uh, pest identity, biology, and damages. We have the plant part, the known pests, and their diseases. So at flowering stage, we have the mango leaf wrapper, mango tip, twig borer, mealybugs, scale insects, and mango trips, which uh, is the subject matter for me this morning. And then diseases, we have anthracnose and the sutimol. At fruit stage, we have fruit flies, mango seed borer, pop weevil, mealybugs, scale insect, capsid bug, sesid fly, ants, and again, mango trips. For diseases, we have anthracnose, scab, sooty mold, diplodia, stem, and the brat. So let's look at our subject matter, the trips, trips, hawaiensis, mango trips. It is relatively small, around 1 millimeter to 1.8 millimeter. Its eggs and why it is first insert larvae are difficult to observe using the naked eye. When fully developed, these insects have four long, narrow fringe wings. The life cycle of these trips is from 13 to 30 days and dependent on host plant and temperature. These trips are sensitive to light. Adults and nymphs attacks the flower. They suck the plant sap, which causes the flowers to wither and fall off. They can extend damage to the fruits, resulting to scabby appearance, locally called chico chico. So, how do we monitor these pests? Uh, in the screen, you see uh, green and uh, red color the red means the presence of trips while green the monitoring and control period we should uh, note that insect damage is more prominent during the dry season while disease problems are prominent during the wet season so at soft plus which is one to three months hard plus for eight months flowering one month, fruit set one month, and fruit growth one to three months. The red color is extended from the start, so plus up to fruit growth, which means that we really have to monitor trips during this period. And the green colors are the period when we should conduct control and the surveillance process. To monitor or for purposes of uh, recognizing the trips, we should look at browning and drying of young leaves and flowers. This is a telltale, telltale sign of the presence of mango trips. And then you will see bronzing and cracking of the young mango fruit skin. We will also see pale yellow larvae, males and brown or bicolored females on young leaves flowers, flower buds, and flowers. How do we manage mango trips? As mentioned earlier, we should monitor. Monitor early appearance of trips by visual sampling, like shaking or dating twigs with leaves and flowers on whiteboard, and by using blue or yellow sticky traps and soil emergence stuff. We should provide a natural enemy reservoir near the orchard by using buffer plants like amaranthus and other flowering plants to attract predatory mites that feed on eggs and larvae of trees. We should manage soil in and around mango trees because trips pupate there. Likewise, weeds must be removed to eliminate reservoir for both trips and this is causing microbial pathogens. Prune or cut off excess branches to improve aeration and to allow more light to penetrate in the canopy. The use of biopesticides or synthetic insecticides should always be need on a need basis or if there are 20 to 30 trips per plant. Follow the labor or guidelines on the dosage, including harvest interval application. 
as far as pesticide management is concerned, this refers to the judicious use of chemical pesticides. It focuses on maximizing the benefits of the chemicals while minimizing its harmful effects. Other means of controlling pests are, as mentioned the earlier, the biological pesticides may be used. Pesticides may be classified based on their uses, formulation type, chemical grouping, and the mode of action on hazards. So there are specific, specific guidelines in applying GAP, a good agricultural practice, to ensure that the use of pesticides in mango production is managed properly. If these are followed judiciously, residues in mango will not exceed the maximum residue limit of the pesticide, ensuring the health and safety of the consumers. So first, for gut using pesticides, we should use only registered pesticides. Apply them and other agricultural chemicals uh, based on the approval of the fertilizer and pesticide authority. So we should read and follow the labor instructions. It is important to always read and understand the pesticide label to be able to use the product properly. The following information is found on the label. Product information, directions for use, precautionary measures, storage and disposal, first aid and medical treatment in case of poisoning and emergency contact number. So here are the examples of what I mentioned the product description which includes the active ingredient and in this case it is deltamethrin and then there is a, a general use statement which says it is a synthetic pyrethroid for the control of major insect pests in mango, crucifers, beans, tobacco, cotton, corn and other plants. And the solvent use is solvesso. And then you have here the direction for use. You have the target pest, the dosage, frequency, and timing of application, the crops, the re-entry period, or number of days to be able to enter or uh, in a given crop, you can enter it only after the recommended number of days after spray. And then you have compatibility and the pre-harvest interval. So then you have the precautionary measures, the first aid and medical treatment in case of poisoning, how you should store and dispose uh, your insecticide, including the empty bottles and cartons, and then the emergency contact number in case of uh, poisoning and other problems related to the use of pesticides. Now let's look at the gap for the proper use and handling of pesticides. Before mixing your pesticide, you should keep the spraying equipment in good condition. Check sprayer for defects. Maintain a record of maintenance checkup of spraying equipment. Then check and repair leaks. Leaky sprayers cause unnecessary waste and risk. So do not use faulty or leaky sprayers. Then clean the nozzles with water or a soft probing device. Never blow into a plug nozzle. For appropriate personal protective equipment, uh, read the label. During mixing of the pesticide, number one is use a measuring cup or a graduated cylinder in measuring the concentrated formulated pesticide with care to avoid spillage or hand contamination. Number two, use clean water for mixing pesticides to avoid microbial contamination of the mango fruits. Number three, when the contents of the pesticide bottles are used up, rinse the bottle three times with water and pour into the last square tank load. Number four, never use your bare hands for mixing. Number five, Use appropriate gloves to minimize dermal exposure. 
during application of the pesticide. Number one, pesticide residues are highest in the face area, including the neck and shoulder, shoulders. So the necessary protection must be used. Do not spray against the wing. Number three, spray inner canopy first before spraying the outer canopy or the leaves. Number four, use a power sprayer with an extended boom, such as bamboo pole, to reduce contact with the spray mist and avoid climbing of trees to minimize exposure. And number five, to minimize exposure while spraying, again, uh, the protective uh, gear, headgear must be used. Number six, maintain a record of spray application indicating information of pesticide use, volume use, area spray, and the one who uses it, the operator. Number seven, to minimize exposure while spraying. As mentioned earlier, the protective gear is important. Cover nose and mouth with a face mask, just like the one we're using now, but there are other masks uh, sold in the market. The, that uh, are different from the one that we use right now. Use a face shield and cap, wear long sleeve shirts and long pants. Change shirt and headgear when it gets wet with perspiration or spray solution and do not rub face or other body parts with contaminated hands. Do not smoke and eat if your hands are not washed clean after spraying. And then after spraying, number one is we should clean the spray equipment by flushing the remaining pesticide solution using detergent and clean water. Number two, do not dispose contaminated water or rinse tape into the waterways. Three is change working clothes immediately after spray. Number four, remove gloves last. Number five, wash your hands with soap and water. And number six, do not go home in your working clothes. Use or spray. Because the pesticides in the public can be absorbed by your skin. Seven, do not hang your clothes to dry for use the following day. Eight, soak clothes in water and detergent. Nine, dispose of rinse water properly, taking care not to contaminate water and food sources. And number 10, loan their working clothes separately from contaminated clothes. And for storage and disposal, partially used pesticide bottles must be placed inside a thick plastic bag to avoid hand contamination. Do not recycle used bottles as containers for oil, vinegar, soy sauce, and for any other food and pit stop purposes. And dispose of empty pesticide bottles and cartons into a pesticide disposal pit. Dig disposal pit in an area away from people and animals and far from water sources. Do not burn pesticide containers. The temperature in the burning pile is not high enough to destroy the pesticide left in the containers. It will only spread faster through the hot air generated while burning and this will lead to inhalation problems and in some cases phytotoxicity in nearby crops now let's look at the uh, gap practices for insect resistance management number one is uh, use products according to the recommended doses under dosing quickly affects insect populations with average levels of tolerance while overdosing kills most of the insect population, leaving only those which are tolerant or resistant. This leads to the development of a new generation of insects, pathogens, or weeds, which are difficult to kill. Use appropriate well-maintained equipment to apply the pesticides. And then use recommended water volume and spray pressure in order to obtain optimum coverage of the leaves or canopy. Avoid spraying to run off.
Number three, target the pests at their vulnerable stage. Like uh, you can use an herbicide for eggs and young insters and larvae should be targeted if possible because these are easier to control than older stages or insters. Number four is use appropriate, well-maintained equipment to apply the pesticides. Use recommended water volume and spray pressure in order to obtain optimal coverage of the canopy. And as mentioned earlier, avoid spraying to run off. Apply alternately products of different modes of action or from different chemical groups such as pyrethroids, carbamates, organophosphates, and new generation compounds. If the efficacy of the product is no longer that good, do not reapply the same insecticide, fungicide, or weedicide, but change to one having a different mode of action. Mixing different pesticides, this may offer a short-term solution to resistance problems. Nevertheless, remember that each product used in the mixture should belong to a different class or mode of action and is used at the recommended, recommended dose. Thank you very much. Ayan, maraming salamat po, Dr. Bonnie, sa siksik na kalaman na inyong ibinahagi tungkol sa GAP on Mingo. Ayan. Uh, ngayon naman po ay dadako po tayo sa bio-based pest control start strategy for trips na tatalakay ni Dr. Divina M. Amalin. Katulad po ng mga naon nating mga speakers, si Ma'am Divine ay isang prolific researcher na batikan sa biological control of invasive uh, pest species, integrated pest management, spider research for both agriculture and medical importance, insect vector control, insect and spider biodiversity, and biologically based techni technologies for pest control. Siya ay nagtapos ng BS at MS sa UPLB at ng PhD in Entomology and Nematology sa University of Florida, USA. Sa kasalukuyan, siya ay isang full professor sa De La Salle University, Manila, at uh, naging balik scientist uh, ng Department of Science and Technology noong 2010 to 2012. Siya po ay postdoctoral research fellow uh, ng Cooperative Agreement Program between U.S. Uh, Department of Agriculture and University of the Florida, Miami, Florida from 2009 to 2012. At noong 2002 to 2005, isa siyang postdoctoral research associate sa University of Florida, Homestead, Florida. So patunoy po ang 200 plus total publications with uh, 1,058 total citations sa pagiging prolific researcher at expertise ni Dr. Amalin. Alami, Amalin, sorry. Dr. Amalin, you may take the Zoom space. Good day, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk about this important insect pest of many agricultural crops and share some potential strategies to manage its, its population using a more bio-based uh, approach. So what is bio-based pest control strategy? Bio-based control strategy is a total symptom approach to pest management as shown in this diagram, which is based on a good understanding of interaction within the ec an ecosystem while using therapeutics as or the use of uh, pesticide as backups. The upside down pyramid to the left reflects the unstable condition under heavy reliance on uh, synthetic chemical pesticide and the upright pyramid to the right reflects sustainable qualities of a total system uh, strategy or a more sustainable uh, pest control strategy. So what is this pest that I'm talking about? Uh, this is uh, the, the, these are the trips uh, under the order Tysonoptera. They are very tiny, a slender insect with fringe uh, wings. And they're primarily plant feeders that this color and the scar leaf 
uh, flower and, and also the fruit surfaces. And they distort the plant parts and they can even be a vector of uh, diseases uh, <clears throat> of uh, different uh, plants that they are uh, infesting. But uh, there are also trip species that are beneficial predators uh, that feed on other insects and mites. Uh, for example, is the six spotted trips uh, in this slide, no, showing you uh, that they are, uh, these trips is, uh, uh, is feeding on uh, plant mite. But uh, this, the trips are, are, are cosmopolitan in nature, uh, widespread distribution globally, just like this uh, trips tabasai, which uh, is um, uh, this uh, species has a wide host range. They feed on more than uh, 100 species of plants, importantly on tobacco, melon, onion, garlic, uh, mango, to name a few. Um, so what are the ways to control these uh, important uh, trips uh, pest species? Um, uh, showing in these uh, uh, slides, uh, as, as shown in the diagram, many different control measures are being utilized in the control of uh, different species of pest, uh, uh, trip species. Uh, to name a few is that first is the genetic control or the use of resistant varieties, cultivar varieties. Uh, the cultural control involving the uh, biosecurity and uh, the sanitation protocol, behavioral uh, control or the use of pheromone and pheromone to manipulate behavior of the insect, um, biological control or the use of uh, different beneficial organism, physical control through, the, through uh, providing barriers and other activities that can get rid of this pest, and uh, chemical control or the use of synthetic pesticide. And this is the last resort in the IPM uh, system. Why? Because the chemical control being the last resort uh, is uh, that uh, there are uh, too many of these uh, chemical pesticide has uh, low to moderate toxicity uh, on non-targets. And uh, metamil, which is uh, being uh, um, uh, recommended for trips, is uh, is a is a carbon meat, and this is highly toxic to humans. So uh, that's why chemical control is the last resort in the IPM system of uh, trips, uh, pest species, and other uh, and other pest species. No? Um, so I will focus on the use of biological control now. And, and uh, first, let's define what a biological control perspective that we have as shown uh, in this slide. So there are several species that has potential as biological control of different trips, trips pest species as shown in this uh, different, uh, uh, as shown in these uh, uh, slides. Um, and uh, Number, uh, number one is the, or the first one is this Aureus species, and uh, uh, several uh, species of thieves are being, um, are being uh, attacked by this, uh, sp this uh, species of uh, uh, predatory Aureus. Uh, another uh, a very good candidate is the predatory mites, in particular the Amblyseus species. Uh, also, a, a parasitoid species, uh, the tiny inserted wasp, is a, big, a, a good candidate also as biologic control of trip species. And various species of entomopathogens, such as the fungal agent and these uh, parasitic uh, nematodes. But just, but just recently, uh, this is a species of penicillium, uh, which is another fungal entomopathogen that was discovered infecting the trips hawaiensis and trips Tabasa in the Philippines, and um, this is uh, this is uh, currently being investigated. And so far, the bioassay result, the biological assay result uh, for this um, entomopathogen, fungal entomopathogen, uh, show um, high potential of this fungal entomopathogen as biological control agent of trips in the Philippines. So with the wide array of natural enemy complex of trips, it is uh, therefore very important to conserve them in the field when present abundantly or augment to increase uh, their population. Conservation of the biological control agent should be done by providing the proper habitat and refuge areas to avail of their full potential as natural control agents against strips pest species. So let's get rid of these strips the natural way. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay ang agrikultura sa Pilipinas.
Ayan, maraming salamat po, short and sweet, pero um, siksik pa rin po ang ating mga nakuhang information tong, uh, galing po kay Ma'am Divine. Ayan, thank you so much Ma'am Divine. At at this point, dadako naman tayo sa pagtalakay ng bioassay of metarhesium anis- anisoprie against trips hawaiensis morgan. Makakasama natin dito si Ms. Lucille M. Faroden. Si Ms. Lucille ay graduate ng BS Agriculture and MS Entomology sa Benguet State University. Siya ngayon ay isang PhD student sa UPLB taking up PhD in Entomology. Her researches are mostly IPM related. Katulad ng proyektong ito, under ng project na ito ay isin- isinagawa niya ang bioassay tests on various trip species using metarhesium SP. So, siya rin po ay uh, uh, nagsagawa ng mga iba pang mga proyekto katulad ng Integrated Pest Management for Salad Vegetables, Arthropod Pest Management of select, Selected Salad Vegetables, Evaluation of Entomopathogenic uh, Fungi and Nematode as Biopesticides to Control Coffee Berry Borer, Hypotenema Sampe, and Other Major Insect Pests of Arabica Coffee. Siya rin po ay uh, nagsagawa ng um, projects like Integrated Pest Management on Selected Highland Vegetables, Alternative Hosts of Diamond Back Moth, at isa sa kanyang mga extension activity ay ang Mass Rearing of Diadegma Semiclosum Helen, the larval parasitoid of Diamond Back Moth, Lutella silustella. Akin pong muling ipinakikilala si Ma'am Lucille. Ma'am Lucille? Good morning. Today, I will be sharing the result of our study, Bioassay of Metarhesium Anisuplie Against Trips Hawaiensis. With me in this research are Dr. Cecilia Reyes, Dr. Divina Amalin, Dr. Bonifacio Cayabiab, Dr. Maria Anita Bautista, and Dr. Junel Guzman. So for a brief introduction, Trips hawaiensis is an invasive insect pest with a wide distribution and host range. In the Philippines, trips are infesting flowers and fruits of mangoes, banana, pomelo, citrus, coffee, roses, rosal, and many other ornamental plants and weeds. This has been reported by Dr. Cecilia Reyes in many of her published articles on Philippine trips. The main control method against trips rely heavily on insecticides. However, the harmful impacts of chemical insecticides on the environment and the public concern on chemical residues in food have driven extensive research for alternatives. Entomopathogenic fungi are currently being explored and investigated for the control of many insect pests. This includes trips. And many of these biological control agents categorized as EPF are already commercially available. So to name a few, these are Uvaria bashana, Metarhesium anisupiae, Aisaria homo sorosea, and Buvaria bronyarchi. Therefore, isolation and effective assessment of local strain of EPF infecting trips are needed to manage mango and banana flower trips. Now, this study was conducted in Latrina Benguet from May 2021 to April 2022. The study aimed to isolate and assess the effectiveness of local strain of fungus against trips hawaiensis. Specifically, the study aimed to identify trips on roses, isolate and identify fungus infecting trips on roses, mass produce fungal isolates in the laboratory, and assess the effectiveness of fungal isolates against trips under laboratory condition. So, this is the farm of our farmer cooperator, Mr. Norbert P. Santo, located at Bahong La Trinidad Benguet. So this is uh, 2.5 kilometers from 
Benguet State University main campus. And here is a uh, picture of a uh, crypts infected with metarishum. And here are also a culture, a mass culture of the metarishum using corn grits. And with me is Dr. Cecilia Reyes at the uh, Entomology Laboratory at Benguet State University. So for the methodology, uh, trips collected from garlic uh, plants were sorted and examined under a microscope. And the book, Thaisanoptera of the Philippine Islands, authored by Dr. Reyes, and other online resources were used to identify the uh, trips. As to the uh, culture of the fungus and identification, standard procedure of isolating fungus from trips was followed. Pure culture of the local strain of metarition was mass produced using sterilized corn beets. While for the identification, sample of pure culture of isolates was sent to the Philippine Genome Center for DNA sequencing and species identification. As to bioassay, we used the uh, different uh, concentrations of metarition anisopia. For the uh, positive control, we use uh, commercial insecticide with the active ingredient for mentanate, hydrochloride, and ammonium chloride and sterile distilled water for the negative control. Now germinated garlic cloves were washed with sterile distilled water, air dried under confined screen mesh, then sprayed with a desired concentration of metarishum. Live healthy adult female trips were washed three times with cold sterile distilled water. They were allowed to recover before being introduced in a tube with a metarishum treated garlic Plantlets. The bioassay test was observed for seven days. Now, as for data analysis, counts of infected dead trips using metarishum anisopia at different concentrations and counts of different trips using positive and negative control were analyzed using Minitab statistical tool version 17. Lethal concentration at 50% values were obtained using COVID analysis. As to uh, results, first, the identification and taxonomic classification of trips attacking roses at Bahong Latwin at Benguet was found to be trips hawaiensis. Now, these trips species have a high reproductive capability and it is well adapted to temperate and tropical conditions. While for the isolated EPF, morphologically it was identified as metarishum, SP, but was further uh, confirmed with the results of the DNA sequence from the Philippine Genome Center that it is metarishum anisopia. Now, this is the result of trial one of the bioassay test. Counts of dead adult female trips using positive and negative control and infected dead trips using metarishum, different metarishum concentrations. Now, analysis of variance between uh, counts of infected dead trips using metarishum concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and mean counts of dead trips using positive control was not significantly different. There was also no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarishum concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 5, 6, 7, and mean counts of dead trips using negative control. Moreover, there was no significant difference between the mean counts of infected dead trips using metarishum concentrations, 1 by 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, and the mean dead counts of trips using negative control. Now, in the second trial, analysis of variance between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarishum concentrations 1 by 10 raised to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and mean counts of dead trips using positive control was not significantly different. There was also no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using metarishum concentrations 1 by 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, and mean counts of dead trips using negative control. On the third trial, 
analysis of variance between mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 6, 7, 8, 9, and mean counts of dead trips using positive control was not significantly different. There was also no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 6, 7, 8, 9, and 5. Moreover, there was no significant difference between mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, and mean dead counts of trips using negative control. Between the three trials, analysis of variance between total mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 8 and 1 by 10 raised to 9 and mean counts of dead trips using positive control was not significantly different. There was also no significant difference between the total mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 6, 7, 8, and 9. There was no significant difference between the mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 5 raised 1 by 10 raised to 5, 6, and 7. Moreover, there was no significant difference between the total mean counts of infected dead trips using meta region concentrations of 1 by 10 raised to 1, 2, 3, 4, and the negative control. Now, probit analysis showed that the level concentration of meta region was 756,473.55 or 7.5 times 10 raised to the fifth power, which means that this concentration can kill 50% of TRIPS Hawaiian Seas population. So the lethal concentration of meta region anisupiae, which was 7.5 by 10 raised to the fifth power against TRIPS Hawaiian Seas, is comparable to the lethal concentration of meta region, which is a MET 11.1, which was 8.1 by 10 raised to 5 on Aedes albopictus mosquito. This was recently reported by Shokat et al. in China. Now, this implies that the local strain of Metarisium anisupiae, isolated from trips infesting roses in Latin and Benguet, could be used as integral part of the pest management strategies of trips. Metarisium anisupiae is available commercially, but it is a general, generalist entomopathogenic fungus known to infect many species of insects. Now, the general mode of infection of metarisium comprises of six stages, adhesion, germination, appressorium formation, penetration, colonization of the hemolymph, extrusion, and sporulation. Now, the local strain of metarisium anisupiae is a biological control agent of Trips hawaiensis in testing mangoes and bananas. Now, as to a recommendation, uh, a conduct on the biological assay of metarisium anisupiae against Trips hawaiensis under a greenhouse uh, condition, and then conduct biological assay of metarisium anisupiae against bees to protect pollinators. So this ends my report and would like to uh, Acknowledge the management and staff of Cagayan State University and Benguet State University for their support. And the technical assistance from Ms. Maria Catherine Kopuyuk and Mr. Carl Jen Ayen. And also this study is a part of the project funded by the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research. Thank you. Ayan, maraming salamat po, Ms. Faradin. Sa pagkakataong ito ay uh, dadako na po tayo sa ating mga panel of reactors. No? So ang una po nating naimbitahan ay isang member ng PIAT 
uh, Mingo Growers Association. At hindi lang po siya simpleng member ng association na ito, kung hindi isa rin po siyang mayor of LGUP yet. At siya rin po ang owner of uh, Hacienda Villablanca at member of the CSU Board of Regents. Siya po ay si Attorney Carmelo O. Villasete. Attorney? Our uh, mango our mango farm here uh, consists of more or less 500 uh, trees. Before we have uh, almost a thousand, but because of uh, the outslot of uh, Typhoon uh, Lawin and Typhoon Ompong later, marami pong uh, nasira at uh, na namatay. Well, I started planting mangoes in uh, 2002, and then. Uh, we start harvesting mangoes sometime in uh, 2007 and that's the start of uh, our production as a uh, mango grower. This was established uh, around uh, five years ago. Our market is purely local and uh, sometimes we bring it to Ilocos. Uh, but uh, mind you, this is one of the problems that besets the uh, mango producers here in uh, the province of Cagayan because of uh, lack of uh, uh, marketing arms and uh, support and of course in facility natin. The uh, number one problem is of course uh, marketing as I have said. Ang dami dami ng mangga, bibili lang ng 15 isang kilo. Eh saan, saan ka doon? Saan ka na doon kikita? Kung minsan nga, minsan 7 pesos na lang ang, uh, ang uh, halaga ng mangga. Of course, ang isang problema yung uh, climate natin. Kasi kung minsan kahit na summer, biglang may uh, malakas na hangin o malakas na uh, biglang magkabagyo, mahuhulog yung mga uh, prutas na na-produce ng ating uh, mga mangga. At ang mga karamihan ditong uh, insekto na nakikita ko ay itong usong kabayo, yung uh, mango hopper. At saka... Meron pang mga ibang uh, nagliliparang klase ng insekto na hindi ko naman uh, ma-identify dahil hindi naman ako entomologist. Well, uh, of course, uh, we do some spraying. We do some, uh, uh, we smoke. Uh, nagsusunog kami, although sabi ng DNR, bawal ang magsunog. But this can help the mango growers in some, uh, in some way, no? At, uh, Yung mangga, kung minsan nga, dinadala ko sa Maynila, yun ang isang problema nga, yung marketing. Dadali ko sa Maynila, kakarga ko sa pick-up ko, o sa, kasi uh, wala napakamura ng mangga dito sa kagaya, lalo pagka, uh, on si, uh, pagka season. No? So, ito ang mga problema na nakikita ko. Well, nakikita mo na naglilinis kami, it should always be clean. Dapat walang uh, branches na naka... naka tungtong sa lupa sapagkat yan ay uh, inaakyatan yan ng uh, mga insekto at yung mga hindi nakakatulong na damo o yung lanot ba Well, ang the most persistent problem na na-encounter na dito ay during the flowering stage of uh, our mangoes biglang uulan biglang uulan so nasisira yung uh, yung mga bulaklak so, yan ang isang problema ng mango growers dito napakaganda ng ng uh, bulaklak napakakapal. Ngayon biglang uulan. Sisira lahat 'yan. O kaya pag uh, may butil na siyempre it's beyond, beyond the human control. Yung uh, biglang uh, magkaroon ng napakalakas na hangin, nahuhulog yung mga bunga. Sayang din. I'm very thankful that uh, Cagayan State University is doing all its best to help the uh, farmers of uh, Cagayan. And uh, I hope that people uh, will be enticed to plant more mangoes because I believe uh, we, if we have, ever we have the facilities, 
this will be a good source of income for small farmers. How I wish the uh, the OST and the DA uh, will will help us in uh, or will teach us how to do some uh, uh, dried mangoes like in Cebu or puree. Ito sa piat li ang daming mangga rito kung minsan tinatapon ng tayong pagkain sa baboy, no? Uh, kasi wala namang wala namang uh, pagbebentahan. Ayan, maraming salamat po, attorney. So, uh, marami, marahil ay marami na po tayong mga katanungan o kaya mga reaksyon na naisi ba to sa ating mga speakers at uh, panel of reactor. So, uh, para pangunahan ng ating open forum, ngayon ay tinatawagan ko na po si Ms. Sarah Jane Manaday, isa sa aming mga kasamang university researcher. Siya po ay isang university research associate mula sa NCPC. Ms. Sarah, Ibinibigay ko na sa inyo ang ating Zoom space. And so, um, thank you, Ms. Mao, and good morning, everyone. Um, maraming po tayong viewers today, and galing pa po sa iba't mga lugar mula sa Region 1. Meron din ako nakikita ng mga taga Region 2 and Region 3. Meron din mga taga NCR, Cotabata, and Davao. So to all our participants this morning, thank you for joining with us on this online research results dissemination and learning event focusing on mango. And thank you din po sa ating um, panel of reactor, Mayor Villasete. And um, thank you also to our presenters this morning, Dr. Cecil Reyes, Dr. Aurora Pinyon, Dr. Bonnie Kayabiab, and Dr. Divin Amalin. And we also have assistant professor uh, Lucille Paroden for sharing their research results and uh, knowledge about pests and diseases of mango. So sila po ang ating mahakasama ngayong umaga para sa ating open forum. And so uh, I think we have enough time. We have more or less 40, 30, 35 minutes for the open forum. And um, before we start with the questions, recall lang natin yung mga presentations kanina. Una, napahinggan na po natin yung tungkol sa mango trips or kulisip-sip at kung ano-ano yung mga species ng trips na meron sa carabao mango. And uh, discuss then ni Dr. Reyes kanina na ang dominant species sa mango dito sa Philippines ay ang trips hawaiensis. Kasunod nito, na-discuss din ni... Uh, Dr. Pinyon ang tungkol sa mga sakit ng mangga at kung paano i-manage itong mga ito. And si Dr. Bonnie naman ay ang integrated pest management of trips at ang good agricultural practices. Sumunod ang pag-discuss ni Dr. Amalin ng mga biological-based pest control strategies. And also another interesting topic na that was shared by Assistant Professor Paroden ay yung identification of potential fungal biocontrol against mango trips. And according to her, they were able to isolate metarisium anisopiae with a fungus that had a potential to control mango trips. So very interesting pong ating questions this morning actually. And so for this portion, we are now encouraging questions from our audience. Kung meron po kayong mga uh, clarifications, this is your chance to ask our um, crop protection experts. Maari pong gamitin ang comment section sa Facebook at YouTube. Sa mga nasa Zoom naman po, I think we have enough time. So we are encouraging you to ask your questions live. Please use the, right, the raise hand uh, reaction button sa ibaba po ng Zoom. At pag natawag po kayo, ay buksan yung inyong camera at microphone at uh, ipakilala muna ang sarili. Kung, at kung taga saan, para makilala po namin kayo. So... Uh, yung iba naman po na medyo nahihiya um, mag-open ng camera, you can use the chat box po para ibigay niyo yung mga questions. Ayan. So, um, do I see? Sino po ang magbabato ng unang question para sa ating mga uh, speakers this morning? Uh-huh. Nakita na ba ako? Tibahin ko lang yung view ng aking Zoom. 
Ayan, so marami po tayong uh, participants dito sa Zoom mismo. So uh, kung meron pa kayong clarifications, please don't hesitate to ask our uh, speakers. This is your chance para uh, i-clarify po ang inyong mga uh, katanungan or mga information na gusto niyong ma-update regarding sa pest management ng mango. Ayan, so medyo mukhang... Um, Nahihiya pa yata magtanong. <laughs> so, siguro uh, ako na muna magtatanong. Um, uh, uh, this question is for um, Dr. Reyes. Ma'am Cecil. Okay, hello. Good morning. Ayan, so, uh, ay, ayun, sige po, bigyan po natin ng chance muna, ma'am. May nagtaas na po ng kamay. Oh, sila na. Okay. So, we have Ma'am Gracie Pagobo. Ma'am Gracie. Um, you're raising your hand. Uh, please open your camera po and uh, introduce yourself. Ma'am Gracie? Hello? Uh, meron bang siyang tanong? Ayan, so uh, sige po, balikan po natin si Ma'am Gracie. Meron po nagtanong mula sa uh, kay Ma'am Fides Zaulda. Ayan, so um, good morning po. Do we know if the trips infecting mango are also carrying viruses that affect mango yield and quality? So yun po yung question. I think this has something to do with the presentation of of Cecil or any one of the presenters so pwede magsalita. Okay, uh, I would like to answer that question. Actually, uh, based on our scientific knowledge or scientific literature, there is no report that Trips Hawaiiensis is associated with any virus. Only, I think uh, we have data on, on bacteria, you know, bacteria isolated from Trypsawayensis. But as of now, luckily, wala pa. Pero sa ibang species ng trips, no? marami. Yung Trypsawayensis lang, ha? But the Certotrips dorsalis, which is also uh, a major pest of mango, is known as a vector of several viral uh, diseases. Thank you, Dr. Cecil. I hope nasagot po yung tanong ni Ma'am Fides. And so I think ready na po si Ma'am Gracie sa kanyang tanong. Kanina, Ma'am Gracie, you can ask your question na po. Ay, ayan, sige. Um, bigyan po natin ng chance si Dr. Bahet. Nandito po pala si Dr. Bahet kasama natin. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Uh, good afternoon para mamaya. Uh, we just want to clarify po about the mango. Patuganin sa iyang pungango, ma'am, kung mag-block siya, kung sa klase siya nga disease, o paano siya na to ma- uh, Kumbaga, mabutangan o pesticide, paano na ito siya i-cured? I think... Ang pungango gani, ma'am, sa mango, di ba? Usually, natin makita ng mga black parts sa, sa pungango nga side. So, kung sa klase siya nga disease, o paano na ito siya... Okay. Maayong buntag, Day. Uh, Tingin ko ako lang ang bisaya dito. Uh, mukhang di maintindihan <laughs> ilonggo ako so maintindihan ang pungango yung nasa nasa stock di ba no yung pungango uh, yung ating plant pathologist dito in house ay si Dr. Bahit uh, wala si uh, uh, Dr. Pinyon ngayon no si is in another meeting uh, can I ask uh, Dr. Boni Kayabiyab or Dr. Bahi to respond to this question. Hey, uh, Dr. Cecil. Yes. 
Paki-translate mo muna. Mahirap ang Ilocano intindihin ng Ilongga eh. <laughs> Sige ma'am, ma'am, usap ba daw imong pangutana kay akong akong English din daw. Kadyot lang? Kadyot lang. Sige dai. Kakay Tagalog po, maintindihan ko ba? Oo, oh, wag kaya, kaya. Si Mrs. Sibuano, sige. Okay. Yung is pungango in Tagalog ma'am. I just want to <laughs> Sorry. Ang, po, ang pungango kay kare man ang stock no na ip- ang ang prutas dere di ba yung ang, ang pungang yes, stock stock uh, yeah. uh, 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 usually kasi po may mga farmers na nag sasabi sa amin na yung pungang daw ay eh, mayroong mga dark spots or nag dark gid siya then unsa daw siya nga sakit and then paano nato siya ma cure maingay stock rot ba Tama ba ako? Dok bahit. Yeah, uh, well, uh, si Bonnie siguro dapat mauna pero uh, anyway, anyway, uh, ang tingin ko doon is uh, nag-start na ng colonization ng isang o dalawang klaseng fungus na doon sa parte na kasi nare-retain yung moisture doon pag umulan ng something. Yun ang isa sa mga huling uh, na stack up yung moisture and that's that provides a very favorable thing for colonization ng well stem and rot or or uh, anthracnose or whatever and then that makes that makes the fruit or developing fruit easier to drop off when there's whiff of uh, wind or something kaya uh, as far as i know uh, si dr boni ang uh, makaka uh, pagsabi na uh, mas tamang uh, sagot niyan or mas applicable dahil yun lang ang alam ko na sa sakit ng uh, mango pag uh, it's it's between uh, or among environmental conditions at the time na nagde-develop ng fruit na yan eh, may nagsabi kanina si uh, ano is during rainy season windy diyan na uh, nahuhulog ng developing fruit or before that lots of uh, flowers uh, 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 drop off the foliage or something would you like to add, Bonnie? I agree with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, prognosis. Possibly, nga, I end up on prognosis. Mostly, fungus. Oh, definitely, fungus. Yun. Oh, so, anong gagawin doon? Ah, eh, hindi 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 ko lang alam kung yung mga mga systemic fungicides na na ini-apply I'm not very particular sa mga brand name at saka mode of action kung after application how long they persist in the system of the mango tree uh, baka naman maganda application pagkatapos eh karamihan doon is uh, within uh, three, four days, and then on the fourth day, dadating ang rain. So, ano pang protection ng pampa, pampa strengthen yung junction na yun kung uh, makukolonize. Kasi seven, seven to twelve days, dun mo lang ma pagpasok ng fungus na yun is dun mo lang malalaman na we, weekend na yung structure na yun. Uh, may in-house ano tayo, specialist or expert sa fungus or punjay. Nandiyan si Dr. Dalisa. Can I ask you, Ma'am Tess, to explain, help us answer this question? Uh, okay, Ma'am. Thank you po. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Kung yung sa connecting stem part, naka-attach dun sa fruit, kung uh-huh. nangingitim yun, baka, tingin ko lang, ah, doon hindi natin nakita yung, yung appearance. Baka yung ano lang, suti mo. Kasi yung mga other diseases like stem and rot and antacnose, usually manifestation sa fruit, once pa nahihinig na yun, hindi yung naka-attach pa dun sa stem. Ah. So kung mga suit emulsion can be controlled by uh, yung pag uh, sa insects management. Kasi yun yung nagdadala ng parang excrete na dumadapo doon sa panginginain ng kulisap na yun na nakaka-attract sa mga black mildew growth ng isang, ng mga amag. So, ang control nun is the management of insects. While kung ang uh, symptoms occurring after the harvest and then nahihinog na, most likely, yung mga patsi-patsi doon, 
ay bakasan din ng ng amag which is the stem and rod kung yun yung naka-attach dun sa stem base ng as a base ng stem so yun lang po ang aking opinion <laughs> Uh, nasaan na yung ating ma'am, yung taga Cebu? Uh, nasaan na kayo? Nandiyan pa ba siya? Kasi po yung black milk jucrot or sooty mold, any part of that plant, uh, yung tissue types. Oh, ng napakarami milk. naman ng sooty mold. Oo, nakita ah, ko yung kapinat. Mm -hmm. Opo, seedling pa lang yung fruits na yun. Dumada po na siya doon, yung mga, yung mga sooty molds. And then mm -hmm. yung sa stem and the stem portion base at saka yung attachment, ang, ang nire-recon ko doon baka black mildew growth lang. So, I hope medyo, na, na, I hope nalinawan po si Ma'am Gracie sa kanyang tanong. Okay. And thank you Ma'am Dalisay and Sir Bahet po sa pag-sagot ng anong tanong. Ang ating pong next question ay, uh, what is the most devastating disease of mango in the Philippines? Yan po yung next natin tanong. So, I think um, plant pathologist po ang sasagot dito. Teka. Teka, nawala ako. Anong, sino sino ang sasagot? An ano yung tanong? Pak what is the, ah, sige, ulitin ko po yung tanong. What is the most devastating disease of mango in the Philippines? Ma'am Tess, ang, ang sasagot niyan. Oh, sige po. <laughs> Tutulong na po. <laughs> Wala kasi si Ao. Oh, oh, oh. May isang meeting lang siya. Oh, oh. Okay po ma'am. Walang problema po. Uh, sa post-harvest, okay, ang dalawang major, yung uh, antracnose, mango antracnose, at saka yung mango stem and rot. Okay, so ang losses niyan, depende kung kung walang treatment prior to uh, before after right after harvest ng hot water or combination of chemical and hot water mataas ang bigay ng uh, tama dun sa prutas and then that uh, of course lowers down the marketability of your fruits kung standing crop naman anywhere sa part pag nandun yung sakit na mango antracnose like sa dahon sa flower, sa panicel, and then yung mga bullet type pa lang or seed the size pa lang na mangga, meron na recommend na calendar spray to at least manage the occurrence of those diseases. Uh, remember, ang pathogens causing both those types of uh, diseases ay tinatawag na endophytic fungi. So meaning, nakapasok na siya dun sa stem, sa fruits, eh, sa flowers prior to fruit setting or even sa paglaki ng fruits. Sila lang ay mamanifest ang symptoms, lalo pag virulent type of the uh, pathogens once the fruit gets ripened. So, ang recommendation, if you will allow, yung calendar spray na judiciously, I'm sorry ha, kung hindi talaga biological control pa din, but if you have a very high uh, presence of the diseases in the area, and uh, as well as big area of uh, plantation to manage, kasama at kalakip ang calendar spray na chemical. Of course, we can also utilize the use of the biological control agents. So, Baka may iaal si Dr. Bahet. <laughs> uh, Ma'am TUD, thank you very much for that. I stand corrected. Oh yeah, salty molds. Kasi kung uh, nag-attract yan na yung pag uh, ano, honeydew ng mga insects, uh, doon din pumapasok ang salty molds. Yes. Tama, tama po yun. Uh, yung idadagdag ko lang kanina yung question ng about viruses sa uh, mango. Uh, hindi ko masasabi na wala kasi walang tumitingin. Pwede, pwede. Meron ba or something that 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 will be the next generation to elucidate? Meron ba or something? Kasi mga uh, tree fruits sa ibang bansa, meron mga... Uh,
Nawala na sound. Nawala na sound ni Dr. Bahit. For the wood three fruits. Wala pang wala pa, wala pang uh, tumitingin. Ah, uh, yung uh, yung trips na magta-transmit then trabaho 'yan ni na Dr. <laughs> Reyes kung mayroon man o ano. Kasi ito, it, ito, ito, it remains ito. to be hmm. it remains to be proven na mayroon ba talaga. Ah. Oo. Kaya nga sinabi ko kanina sa scientific literature, wala pa. Pero dahil wala nga rin nag-aaral, malamang. <laughs> Kasi ilan-ilan na nga lang tayo dito. Oo. Oo. So, posible talaga na no, mayroon din silang dalang viruses. Thank you so much po sa inyong uh, pag-share ng uh, ay pagsagot ng mga katanungan. Atin pong next na question ay tungkol, medyo nabanggit na rin po ito kanina yung sa mga biological control pero uh, meron pong from Daniel Ebina kung meron na po ba daw I think specific na biological control for trips. I think this is referring to trips ng mango po. Uh, uh, siguro ganito pag si Miss Lucille Pwede niya ang sagutin yan. Hmm. Um, may I ask? Um, Ma'am Lucille po? Sorry, nawawala po kasi ang signal sa university. Pero good morning po sa ating mango farmers. And then sa nagtanong po sa, sa question po. Now, with regards po sa ating beneficial organisms, marami po tayong beneficial organisms that can, that feed on trips. Yung mga insekto na tinatawag nating predator, marami po dyan, marami po sa ating uh, farms, but at the moment, hindi pa siya namamas produced. But dito sa aming research, So far, ang na-test namin is yung na-present ko kanina, which is Metarisium anisupiae, which is also available mostly, I think, sa mga different, uh, uh, B, yung mga BPI per region. Kasi dito sa amin sa Baguio, nagbibigay po kami ng free uh, Metarisium isolates, pure culture isolates ng Metarisium for uh, farmers lalo na sa mga nagpa-practice ng organic farming. Also sa mga GAP uh, practitioners. But so far, yun pa lang po. But as to insect, beneficial insects, marami po sa ating environment, sa ating uh, natural ecosystem. Yun okay, po. So, thank you, Ma'am Lucille, for sharing those information. Uh, ito pong next question na rin, ah, uh, has something to do with biofon din. So, uh, may I ask about entomopathogenic nematodes, EPNs. Ano pong strain ng EPN ang pinakamataas ang virulence sa trips or other insect po ng mango? So, anyone from the presenters po can speak. I think I will volunteer to answer that question. Uh, in the Philippines, I have no knowledge, I have no idea if somebody or one of our group no, is conducting a study on um, parasitic nematodes. But I have um, a short study on nematodes in, um, pathogenic to, to trips, a different species of trips in Florida when I um, went there for my postdoctoral program under Fort Bright. Napakarami at napakalaki ng potential niya. Actually, gusto ko nga ipagawa yan sa aking, graduate, uh, sa aking undergraduate students sa uh, De La Salle University way back in 2018. Pero hindi nila kinaya yung portion na yon Kasi nga, aaralin mo yung trips, aaralin mo pa yung nematodes. Ano? Pero yung experience ko talaga, yung buong body, yung abdomen ng trips na yon kung tiyagaan mo lang nabubuksan, Nandoon lahat yung nematodes. Nakuha ko yon sa peanut plantation ng uh, Florida, University of Florida, experimental area. Um, 
baka dito sa audience natin, baka meron kayong estudyante, I'm willing to serve as one of the advisors. Gawin natin. Kasi ginagamit na nila yan dun. Si Dr. Kawili, baka kaya niyang sagutin ito. I'm sure she's interested also. Yes, on, ma'am. On yes. Ma'am, so, we have ano, uh, isolated several uh, populations and species of entomopathogenic nematode. No? Local, locally here in the Philippines. Oh, pero na. Uh, uh, Benguet State University also have some researches. No? So, si Nora po, here, si Nora Hill at si ma'am... Sino nga yun? Ano? <laughs> Nanimutan ko ang name. Uh, Dr. Pedrachi po. Yun, Dr. Pedrachi. Oh, okay. ano, uh, working on it, pathogenic nematodes. So we haven't tested it, them, no, them yet in uh, trips. But that would be uh, a very good uh, area to explore, ma'am. So, kung merong gustong... Ayan, and dyan na... Ayun, lang, naghahanap tayo. Oo, oh, oh, sige. Kung gusto nyo yung yeah. gawin, kung gawin natin. Yoche, and dyan din si, ano, si Lucille. So, mm-hmm. maybe uh, we can collaborate on this. No? Thank you, Ma'am Bambi, for sharing that information. So, according po kay Ma'am Bambi at kay Ma'am Cecil, ay, um, EPN has a great, poten- uh, a great potential in managing... Uh, Um, pests in mango. So, um, so meron, I think we have still time. So, kung meron pong makatanungan, um, meron po ditong isang tanong from Erwin sa Zoom. Um, I think this has something to do with um, using pure organic application. Uh, kung effective ba, pagkakaintin ko, effective po ba siya against trips? If I'm not mistaken, tama po ba ako ng pagkakaintig doon sa tanong? Mr. Erwin, baka gusto niyo pong um, buksan yung inyong audio. You can ask uh, personally sa ating mga presenters po regarding doon sa tanong yun. Yung organic uh, application and paggamit ng OHN2 and EM5. I think these are organic um, pesticides. Oh. OHN, Oriental Herbal Nutrient. Kaka-check ko lang. So, medyo hindi rin pa ako ganun ka-familiar. Um, kung meron pa sa presenters natin ang familiar gan sa katanungan ni Mr. Erwin. Can we ask Doc Bonnie? Oh, magandang umaga po at salamat uh, sa katanungan ano. Basically, uh, sa organic, ang uh, Europe Agriculture Fisheries Standards ang uh, merong mga nakaregistro na botanicals uh, na magagamit sa mga trips. Wala pa mong alam na meron silang pero mga nakaregistro. Uh, Siyempre, maraming mga insecto rin, no? mga generalist predators. Hindi naman nire-registro ng mga ito. At microbials, wala ko lang na nakaregistro na mga issue. But generally, ang uh, mga RCPCs ang nabibigay na ano, uh, nutrition sa mga magsasaka. So we have 14 regional crop production centers na pwede na ang katanungan. Of course, meron mga practitioners ng IMO, OHN, mga iba't ibang grupo yan na gumagamit sa kasalagay. At hindi naman yung pinagbabawal ng gobyerno ang mga initiatives. Okay. So, thank you, Sir Bonnie. Uh, meron pa po ba tayong mga katanungan? I think we have still more or less 10 minutes allotted for the open forum. Sino pa pong may mga katanungan? Ayan, so... Okay, so... Um, ito po ay nakita ko dun sa isa sa mga grupo ng mga mango growers. Um, ano pong masasabi nyo sa paghahalo ng um, sabon panlaba with insecticides against trips? Sagutin ko lang ano ang... Ah, uh, 
Sagutin ko lang ang sa sabon. May mga experience ako dyan, siyempre. Ano? Uh, halimbawa, sa mga apan-apan ang tawag nila, no? sa mga migratory locals. There was a time na ang mga sabon, no? pinagsabonan sa umaga, ay nagagamit kasi siyempre natatakpan yung mga spiracles ng uh, ano, insekto. Ano. Pero when it comes to the leaves of plants, nasubukan ko yan, sinubukan ko rin ang sabon sa sitaw. Ang problema, pag nasobrahan mo, nagkakaroon ng pamamagaw, parang kalyo, yung halaman. So, naapektuhan ang photosynthesis, pati na, siyempre, yung pamamulok lang at pagbubunga. Now, in the case of mango, pwede niya pong experiment rin yun. Halimbawa, tatlong kutsarang joy sa 16 liters water. Bago mo spray ng buo sa marami ng dao, subukan nilang sa mga ilang dao in 24 hours kung wala namang epekto po. Halimbawa, sa dao o no, sa mga bulaklak at buma, then walang masama na gamitin. In fact, ginagamit din naman nila sa US at ibang bansa ang sabon. People ang alam ko na sasak na ginagamit nila ang laban sa pangisekto. At sa organic naman, hinahalong pangalan na ng bawang sibuyas o kaya siling. O kaya ginger. So pwede na rin ipanluto yung hero lang po. So yun po yung nasasabi ko sa sabot. Pag-ingatan lang, ginamit niya sa Afrika nitong nakaraan sa Fall Army War at uh, nagbigay ng warning ang gobyerno, iba't ibang gobyerno sa Afrika na pag-ingatan sila na ang pag-ingatan. Okay, so um, thank you Sir Bonnie for um, sharing your uh, knowledge about yung sa mga ganong practices na ating mga mango farmers. So, um, meron pa po ba? Baka may gusto pa pong magpahabol ng questions. Meron pa pa yung uh, mga 2 to 3 minutes na allotted for the open forum. Ayan. Um, siguro, uh, uh, um, one last question po, siguro kay Ma'am Cecil. Um, so, nabanggit ni Ma'am kanina na ang dominant species ng mango trips ay ang trips hawaiensis. Ano po ang implication nito, Ma'am, tingin niyo sa ating mga mango growers? Or same lang po ba yung effect nitong species na to with other species? Thank you for that question. Actually, maganda yan na tanong. Kasi nga, uh, eh, hindi kasi specific yung pest natin no sa mango. So yung trips hawaiensis or Hawaiian trips or flower trips yun din kasi polypigos kasi siya, di ba? Invasive na. Ibig sabihin no, hindi siya galing hindi siya galing dito sa Pilipinas, galing siya pa ng Hawaii, doon siya na discover nandoon na ngayon sa Europe at nangangain ng lalo na doon sa Davao kung nandiyan si Badik Granada sa Benicol Colon diyan sa team natin, maikawento nila kung gaano ka-serious ngayon yun uh, yung, yung flower trips na yan. Oo. Sa mangga, dahil sa liit niya, baka hindi natin na masyadong napapansin na yung damage nila. Kasi di ba attractnos lang, eh, magsawa ka na. Sabi nga ni Mayor Villasete kanina, eh, ulanin lang, eh, hindi mo na kailangan yung trips para sirain niya yung mga mga bulaklak doon, di ba? Napakarami ng flowers pag tapos ng glaglagan na lang, ano, ganon. So, hindi nila siguro masyadong nararamdaman yung effect ng trips. Hindi nila na i -re report si seed fly, napakarami din, di ba? Yung mango hoppers, napakarami din. So, pero ang sinasabi natin, marami kasi tayong tinatanim sa farm natin at hindi lang mangga. So kung dapat malaman ninyo na uh, nandoon si pala sa sili, nandoon pala sa roses mo, nandoon no, sa ornamental plants mo, no? Nandoon na sa santol, nandoon sa coffee, nandoon na sa lahat. So kung ganyan siya ka polypigos, pwede siyang mangain ng maraming maraming flowers, maraming species no? ng plants. We Kahit konti lang yan sa mangga mo, no? eh be, dapat mo kontrolin siya. Kasi marami siyang pwedeng sirain. Uh, at yun na nga, uh, pwede siyang magdala rin ng bakterya na i-report -re mo rin. 
Ano si Sarah? <laughs> Next, yes. tomorrow, tomorrow, di ba? Na i-report mo rin tomorrow. Uh, so dapat, so I would like to invite the uh, itong ating mga participants ngayon, itutuloy po natin itong webinar natin. Meron pa tayong onion and garlic, di ba, na webinars. Uh, tuloy natin. At kung ubos na yung oras natin today, ay marami pa tayong oras tomorrow. Sige. Thank you. So thank you, Ma'am Cecil, for that uh, information na sinerya po sa amin. And uh, I think that's it. Um, Uh, kung wala na po tayong pahabol, wala po ba talagang hahabol ng tanong? Ayan. So kung wala na po talaga, um, dito na po nagtatapos sa ating open forum. Marami pong salamat sa pag-participate ninyong lahat. Akin pong tinatawagan ng ating MC para sa susunod na part ng ating programa. Miss Mao? Ayan. Maraming salamat, Miss Sara. Ah, maraming salamat din po sa ating mga um, experts. At lalong-lalo na sa lahat ng mga nakilakok sa ating open forum. Naging meaningful at umaatikabo ang ating balitaktakan. Ano po? Ngayon gusto ko pong ipaalala sa lahat na sumagot sa ating evaluation. Ito po ay uh, makakatulong sa amin upang lalo pang pagbutihin ng ating mga susunod na webinars na katulad nito. Ang links po ay makikita sa Zoom chat. Ipopost po nila ito. Ayan. At... Uh, Uh, sa FB comment section at YouTube comment section. Maaari nyo rin pong iscan ang QR code na sa inyong screen para makarating ang, sa ating online evaluation. Kaakibat po dito ay makakatanggap kayo ng certificate of attendance na ipapadala sa inyo via email. Ayan. So, uh, Maraming salamat po sa lahat na nagbigay at magbibigay sa amin ng evaluation. Sa yugtong ito ay nais kong tawagan ang direktor ng National Crop Protection Center. Siya rin ay isang entomologist at naging bahagi din ng pag-aaral ukol sa mga kulisipsip. Upang magbigay ng pangbukas sa panalita, pananalita sa webinar na ito, tinatawagan po natin si Dr. Barbara L. Cruyff Mambambi. To the Director of the DA Bureau of Agricultural Research, Dr. Junel B. Soriano. To the Assistant Director of DA Bar, Dr. Joel H. Lares. To the President of the Cagayan State University, Dr. Urduha G. Alvarado. To the project team behind the project Surveillance and Detection of Microbe Utilizing Molecular Techniques and Associated Trips Vector on Onion, Garlic, and Mango in Luzon headed by Dr. Junel B. Guzman, to our organizers and participants, a pleasant day to everyone. Today, we witness a very important part of the research process. As researchers, it is one of our tasks to communicate our research findings to those who might find the information useful. For the first day of this learning event, we have heard from our crop protection experts what trip species and diseases affect mangoes and what the suggested management techniques are. We hope that through this event, uh, the students and researchers of our audience have found inspiration for their own research endeavors. Most especially, we hope that our mango growers have gathered relevant information today. We hope that just as we enjoy the harvest from your farms, you will also find value in the findings of our research. May the topics discussed today help you in addressing some of the problems and issues you face in the mango farm. Allow me to take this time to acknowledge those who have made this event possible. Of course, we thank the Bureau of Agricultural Research for their support, the project team for their diligence in the conduct of this study, the organizers from the Cagayan State University, headed by the very energetic and passionate Dr. Cecilia Reyes, and the National Crop Protection Center of CAFS UPLB for the coordination of this learning event, and the attendees for joining us for the first part of this three-day activity. We hope to see you all again tomorrow for another set of discussion about trips, this time on onion. Maraming salamat po, Hiraya Manuari.
Ayan. Maraming salamat po, Ma'am Bambi. At uh, bago po kami magpaalam sa inyo, ay nais po namin kayong imbitahan sa susunod na installment ng ating Research Results Dissemination and Learning Event. Ito naman po ay tungkol sa onion. Ngayon, ah, muli nating sasamahan si Dr. Reyes, Dr. Pinyon, Dr. Kayabiap, Dr. Amalin, at Assistant Professor Faraden. At ah, makakasama din natin sa pagkakataong ito si Dr. Bahet, na isang virologist at balik scientist sa Tarlac Agricultural University at Mariano Marcos State University. Muli po ay ah, kami nagpapasalamat sa inyong pagsubaybay. Kita-kita po tayo ulit bukas sa parehong oras, alas 9 hanggang alas 11.30 ng umaga via Zoom, FB Live, and YouTube Live. Maraming salamat po ulit. Paano? Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Salamat Thank you po. From Parbok, MPC Pasig. Salamat po.